Welcome back to Computer Science 340. This week's topic has been binary search trees, and we have one last thing to cover related to this topic, which is basically the analysis part of this. So we've talked a little bit about this so far. I've said that the goal of the binary search tree is to make it so we can do the binary search algorithm but we need to, to look and see if that is actually an achieved goal or not. Does the binary search tree, does it give us the big O of log n performance for both searching and inserting that we set out to get? And it turns out that it actually sort of depends. And the thing it depends on is how well balanced the binary search tree is. You see, it turns out that you can build lots of different binary search trees from the same data. Some will be really compact and well balanced. And in those cases, it turns out that yes, we do achieve the big O of log n performance that we want, but we can also build really unbalanced trees and those don't quite get the same good performance. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And then we'll also go over an algorithm that takes any binary search tree and balances it as ideally as possible. So let's go ahead and dive into this. All right, so now let's start talking about doing the analysis here. I've drawn a simple binary search tree without any data in it, just with the sort of structure of the tree. Now let's analyze the binary search algorithm that we've been using with this binary search tree. Well, each time we call it, we are given a node and let's say we start with the root node. Based off of that, we're either going to go to the left or right. And so let's say we go left and then we go maybe right, and then we go left, and we work our way down the tree. And now the question is, how many of those iterations are we going to have to do before we either find the thing that we're looking for or we hit the end of the tree? And in this case, when the tree is well all filled out like this, it's going to be big O of log n. The reason being, the same thing that we saw before. Essentially, we're throwing away half the tree with each decision, because if it's balanced, half of the tree is to the left and half is to the right for every node. So then here, when we get to the second level, a quarter of the tree is to the left and a quarter of the tree is to the right, and then an eighth and an eighth and so on and so forth. Another way to look at this is to think about how many nodes do we get per level? Well, this is level zero, this is level one, this is level two, this is level three. And if we think about it, I think we'll see that we have two to the level many nodes on each level. So here on level zero, we have one node. Here we have two nodes. Here we have two squared is four nodes. Here we have two to the three is eight nodes. And if I was to carry this down, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 nodes on this next level on level four. And so every time we add a level of the tree, we basically double the amount of nodes that we can store total. And so there's an exponential relationship between the level of the tree we're on and how many nodes can be stored. And so because of that, like looking at it the other way, to have n nodes, you have log n levels. And so that's where we get the big O of log n. And this is for not just the searching algorithm that we talked about, but also for the insert algorithm, because basically the way insert works, as we talked about, is you search for where it, the thing is going to go and then you put it in place. The putting it in place just takes a constant amount of time. It's the searching that has the loop involved. And so you again have to go basically to the end of the tree. That's also true for the remove algorithm we talked about. Basically, you just have to search for the one to remove and then actually doing the swap and everything is basically a constant amount of time. So in this sort of like best case scenario where the tree looks really good, we have log n time, which is very efficient for doing the search, the insert and the remove. But that's only in the best case. Let me fill some numbers into these nodes so that we can look at what the worst case tree would be. Okay, I filled some data into this tree, some numbers following the binary search tree rules. Well, I will say that we could end up, if we wanted to build a binary search tree with this data, we could end up with this sort of ideal case over here like we have, but we also could have ended up with a different tree that looks like this. This is also a binary search tree. It's binary because all of the nodes have zero, one, or two children. None of them in fact have two, but that still doesn't make it not a binary tree. And it's a binary search tree because it follows our rules. Everything to the right of this eight node here is in fact bigger than eight. And everything to the left of this 93 node is in fact less than 93. You'll see that it follows all of the binary search tree rules. 
But if we tried to do a search on this, it's not going to be as efficient as it is in this left binary search tree. In the left binary search tree, we can do at most one, two, three, four levels because the height of the tree is four. The height of this tree is the same as the number of nodes in it. There's 15 nodes in here and the height of the tree is 15. So this tree on the left would be big O of log n to search. This one over here would be big O of n because we're not actually narrowing anything down at every step of the search. In fact, we're searching through the entire structure. And if you think about it, this thing is basically the exact same thing as a linked list. If you look at it, it's just a linked list where sometimes we follow a right path and sometimes we follow a left path. So assuming your binary search tree is relatively well balanced, it's going to be big O of log n, but you can get into this sort of case, which is called, by the way, a degenerate tree, which is a really funny term to me because a degenerate person is like a, a ne'er-do-well or something. And so this tree is really poorly balanced and it doesn't give it all good performance, giving us big O of n. Most binary search trees would be, I guess, somewhere in between, right? They would probably not be all perfectly 100% balanced, but they are also not going to be degenerate. It turns out that if you just sort of like randomly build your binary search tree, it'll be more balanced than not. And you'll have pretty darn good performance, even if you don't like explicitly make sure it's 100% balanced. So that's the analysis for this. The next thing we'll talk about in this video real quick is an algorithm to balance a tree given one that is degenerate or at least like somewhere in between. All right, so let's say we wanna balance this monstrosity degenerate tree over here on the right. Well, there's a couple of different algorithms for this, but I think the simplest one is to just deconstruct it all together into an array and then rebuild it from scratch in a smarter way. So what we want to do first is we want to make an array that is big enough to hold all of the data. So in this case, it would be an array of size 15. Then what we do is we want to put the data into this thing in order. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the recursive in order traversal in order to do that. We've already seen how that works for like printing out the data. Now we're going to do the same traversal, except instead of printing each item, we're going to go ahead and put it into this array. So it looks weird because it's so degenerate, but we're gonna start here. Um, then we're gonna go left, but there is no left. Then we do the node itself and put the eight in here. Then we'll go to the 15, the 20, and the 27. When we get down here to this 93 node, we're not gonna do the 93 yet. We're gonna do the entire left subtree, which will in fact be all of the other nodes. And so we'll only come back up to do the 93 last of all. So the effect of this is that it gets put into the array in sorted order like that. Then what we do is we go ahead and we completely get rid of our original binary tree, deleting the whole thing. Then we're going to build the tree back up from scratch. And so we're going to choose these nodes from the array to insert, and we're gonna do it in an order such that the resulting tree is gonna be balanced. Now the way our insert works is if we call it when the tree is empty, it doesn't exist at all right now, what's going to happen is the very first node we put in is going to become the root node. And so last time our root node was eight, which was a terrible choice for the root node because all of the other nodes were in the right subtree because they're all bigger than eight. So what is a good root node here? Which one should we pick? Think about it for a minute. Well, hopefully you came to the decision that one of the small value nodes is not going to be good because they have most of the other nodes in the right subtree. Likewise, the nodes over here on the very right side aren't going to be good choices because all the other nodes are going to be to the left. In fact, the best node to use is the one that's like smack dab in the middle, which in fact is this one that has the value 50. That one should serve as our root node because half the nodes are going to be in the left subtree and the other half the nodes are going to be in the right subtree. So we're going to go ahead and find the middle value and then insert it into the tree, which will give us the root value of 50. So then this one has been sort of taken care of. So then what we're going to do is we're going to again use recursion to do something. We've taken care of the 50. Now we need to insert this array into our binary search tree and we need to insert this array into our binary search tree. So we're going to recursively do that using the algorithm we're writing to do the insertion of all of these nodes from the array. We're going to call that same method on the left half and the right half. 
When that happens, what we're going to do is we're going to, let's say we start with the left half first, we're going to pick the middle node again from this left half, which is going to be the 27 node. So that one is going to get inserted and it'll go over here to the left of 50. Then we recursively do this for the left half again, and that's going to pick the middle, which is 15. So that one will get put in next. Then we'll do the left half of that, which was going to result in just the eight being added. And then we do the right half of that, which results in the 20 being added, which will go down here. Then we've done sort of this quarter. And so then we're going to recursively insert this quarter, which is going to result in the 40 being added next, then the 30, and then the 43. Then that will have finished, and this whole left half will have been recursively inserted. So we do the same thing with this right half over here. And again, it's going to pick the middle node to serve as the next one to be inserted, which will cause it to go over here right on the right of the original root 50, and then it builds off from there. So that's essentially what's happening here. We deconstruct the tree into an array, and then we pick the most centrally located values in each sub part of the array in order to insert it, which is going to result in it being this perfectly balanced tree that looks like this over here. So we I don't want to spend all the time writing all the code for this from scratch. So let's go ahead and look at some sort of pre-done code that solves this problem. Okay, so in this balance.java file, I have a main method that makes a binary search tree of characters, and it puts in the capital letters A to Z, and it puts them in order into this tree. And so that's not going to be great, because if we put A in first, then A will be the root, and then if we put B in, B will be to the right of that, and C and D, and so on and so forth. So before balancing, when we search for Z, it's going to have to go through A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of the letters before it can get to Z. Then we call this balance method to go ahead and balance the tree, and we do it again. So ideally then we're going to look in the middle of the alphabet, like M or N probably, and then go to the right and then look in the middle of the second half and look at, I guess, R or S or something, and we're going to narrow it down that way and make the search more efficient. So let's look at this balance method. It is right here. What we do is we make an array list to store the data because that was the first step. Remember, we sort of deconstruct it. Then we call this in order fill method. Let's look at that. In order fill is right here. What we do for this method is we take in the starting node and then an array list to fill into. Then it's basically the exact same thing as the in order print method. If we have a node, we recursively put in all of the things in the left subtree. Then we call array.add, adding to the end of the array list. And then we recursively do all the right nodes. So it's exactly the same as the in order print method, except instead of printing each value, we just append it to this array. So that's what's happening there. Then we remove all the nodes from the tree. We just use our remove method to remove the root node over and over and over again until there is no tree left that serves to just get rid of the whole thing. I suppose we could have also just set root equal to null. That would have worked as well. Then we call this insert order method. This is the part that we talked about on the whiteboard where we recursively pick the next best value to be put into the binary search tree over and over and over again. So let's look at what this one looks like. Here we have this method here, and it is again recursive. So we take the array that we're pulling from, and we take the start and the end. The start and the end start off at zero and array size minus one respectively. So this is just like in merge sort when we were dealing with keeping track of the endpoints about like which range we're dealing with. So then what we do is we find the middle item by the same method we used before, average the start and the end indices. Then we insert that into the binary search tree by calling our same old insert method that we've used for everything else. Then we recursively insert the left half into the binary search tree by passing the same array, but now we keep start the same and do middle minus one, so that gives us the left half. And then we recursively insert the right half by passing middle plus one for the left and then end for the end. So just like we talked about on the board, this was actually relatively simple to implement, but it is pretty effective. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so when we run it, like I said before balancing to search for Z, we have to go all the way to Z. I changed the search method so it just prints out the node we're searching on so you can see how long it takes. But then after balancing, it jumps right to M, which became our root node. 
then T was the one right to the right of M, and then W and Y and Z. So now in our sort of like worst case search performance, where the one we're looking for is a leaf node, it took still much less time than it did before. So on the notes page, we have the algorithm for this, which as I said, is a relatively straightforward recursive algorithm. If you followed all the other things we've done with merge sorting and binary searching and the, all these tree algorithms, hopefully it made sense. The analysis for binary search trees sort of depends on them being relatively well balanced. So it's good that we have a technique for getting them into that shape. All right, that's all for binary search trees in this week. This was a big topic because binary search trees are sort of relatively complicated and I wanted to make sure we went through them in some amount of detail. So if you have any questions on these or are confused on anything, please just let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks.